Hej och välkomna till Landet Lär. Jag heter Sara Uddemar och jobbar på Landsbygdsnätverkets kansli. Och de här webbinarierna körs live på tisdagar klockan 12. Idag ska det handla om rådgivningens roll för lantbruket. Dagens föreläsare är professor Tom Kelly. Och han kommer från den irländska rådgivnings rådgivningsorganisationen Chagask. Och föreläsningen kommer att hållas på engelska. Det här avsnittet spelas in och du kan se det igen när du vill på vår webb. Adressen dit är landsbygdsnatverket.se-landetlar. Där lägger vi också upp information om kommande webbinarier. Nästa avsnitt är den 4 februari och då ska det handla om hur man kan tänka vid inköp av fisk. För dig som sitter med läsplatta eller mobil så är det bäst att använda Adobe Connects app för att följa webbinariet. Om du sitter vid en dator så är det bra om du har fast internetuppkoppling. Och skulle någonting strula under tiden så brukar det lösa sig om du går ur programmet och sen kommer tillbaka in igen. Vi har en chatt också som ni ser här till höger om mig. Där finns en chattmoderator som samlar in alla era frågor under föreläsningen och så tar vi dem efteråt. Och den här gången vill vi gärna att ni ställer era frågor på engelska. Och vi kommer hålla på till klockan kvart i ett idag ungefär. Alldeles strax kommer du också kunna ladda ner dagens presentation. Då går du till det gröna fältet som dyker upp till höger i bild. Där det står ladda ner filer och då markerar du filen och trycker på download file. Vi ska strax släppa in dagens föreläsare men först vill jag veta lite mer om er. Jag ser att ni är många som tittar och jag vill veta var ni finns just nu. Och då klickar ni två alternativ och väljer mellan Stockholm, Göteborg, Malmö, annan stad, tätort eller landsbygd. Och så ska ni kryssa i om ni finns i Norrland, Svealand eller Götaland. Då ska vi se här hur spridningen ser ut. Vi har en del i landsbygd och annan stad. Och så har vi en majoritet i Götaland ser jag också. Jättekul att ni är så många som har hittat hit. Och jag vill också passa på att påminna er om att ställa mycket frågor under föreläsningen och under frågepasset efteråt. Jättekul att ni är så många som är med. Um, well, now it's time to welcome today's lecturer, Professor Tom Kelly. Tom, are you with us? Can you Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can okay. hear you, but we yeah, can you should see, see you. me now. There you well, are. Thank you very much, Sarah. And, Hi, uh, Professor Kelly. Welcome. Thanks very much for the invitation to make uh, this presentation. Um, and again, I see from the list of participants that some of my friends that from from uh, Sweden that I have met before at various events. So, hello to all of them, and uh, um, I'm glad very much to be here making this presentation about uh, Chagas and the Irish ecosystem. So I will start my presentation if that's okay. And um, if you can put up the first slide. Yeah, if you're ready. Okay, so my name is uh, Tom Kelly. I am the Director of Knowledge Transfer in Chagas. And uh, I want to talk here about the advisory service and how they support innovation in Ireland and maybe something again about some of the developments in Europe. So again, I will talk really about my own organization, uh, about the ecosystem in Europe. And uh, I think how we have maybe changed from a conventional type advisory service to maybe more towards moving more towards innovation support in Chagas and how that has been driven to a certain extent by the Euro European uh, initiatives. Um, European networks, the UFRAS organization, I want to talk a little bit about that and uh, how the EU supports a better ACUS. Also, we have, a, I think, a, a very important development in Ireland called the Connected Programme, and I will talk a little bit about that. 
So, first of all, about Chagas. Um, in within Chagas, uh, we we have uh, uh, an advisory, uh, research, and education service. So I have listed here the the uh, type of facilities we have. We have uh, fifty two offices, uh, seven colleges in total. Uh, we have some of these are private colleges, but we pay the staff, uh, even though the farms are run by by private institutions. And we have seven major research centres around the country. In the table, you can see the staff numbers in the organisation, permanent, contract, and total figures. Um, so you can see they're made up of researchers, advisors, education, and then specialists who specialists act as an intermediary between um, between uh, advisors and researchers and education and researchers. So if we look at this little graphic at the bottom, it looks at the functions of the organisation. And in terms of research, Chagas uh, is responsible for about 80 to 85 percent of the applied research in food and agriculture that's done uh, within the Irish uh, state. So it's quite a significant player in terms of uh, applied research. In terms of advice, we carry out about 50% of the advisory services are within Chagas in terms of staff numbers and in terms of, uh, of services to farmers. Within education, we uh, up to this year, we have, a, we have about 90% of the um, vocational education, that's training of young farmers, we are responsible for that. So we're quite involved in that. And our advisors also deliver part of that education program uh, through various courses. In the map of Ireland, you can see that in the north of Ireland, we, we, have, uh, we, we do not have much, uh, we do not have any uh, staff based in the north of Ireland, but we have a lot of uh, cooperation and joint across-border cooperation with, with the advisory services, CAFRI, and with Greenmount Agricultural Colleges in the north. So, yeah. Um, just a little bit about Irish agriculture and uh, you, those of you that are familiar with Irish agriculture, it's predominantly a, a pasture-based production systems around uh, livestock, predominantly dairy, beef and sheep production. And uh, it's a significant contribution to uh, the Irish economy at about 8% to of the GNP and about uh, in terms of exports, 22% in terms of value terms of, of our exports are food related or uh, food product related. And about 8%, 9% of that is, is uh, far at farm value. So it's a significant contributor to the uh, Irish economy uh, and uh, it's a very important source. So Chag the Chagas goals are very similar to what you see in other organizations. Predominantly, the main goal is, uh, is in terms of improved competitiveness, uh, but also support for sustainability and support for um, uh, diversification. And obviously, we have a goal around how we produce value for money. Because as an organization, we receive about 70 to uh, a little less than 70% of our funding directly by way of a grant in aid from the government. And this is because, uh, I think, mainly because agriculture is such an important component of, of our economy. So I think we're fortunate in Ireland that 10 years ago, we implemented a, a, a strategic plan for food and agriculture called uh, Food Harvest 2020. And within that program, we're very, we had very ambitious targets with the, with the abolition of milk quotas been well signaled in advance, we set a target to increase milk production by 50%. That figure, that uh, increase was achieved in two years ago in 2018. We also set targets to increase beef production and sheep production. The sheep production figure has not been met. The beef production figure has almost been met. So this is, I think, a, a good example of a really the importance of a really good national strategy, a strategy that is formed by all of the stakeholders. We have continued that uh, in, in uh, five years ago in developing what we call the 
uh, a new strategy called Foodwise 2025. And that strategy, again, looks at adding value, particularly in terms of food, uh, in terms of the food product, products that, we, that, we, that come from agriculture. Uh, within Foodwise, there's one big difference between the two strategies, and that is that in the, in the Foodwise strategy, the, the challenges that are there for the advisory services and the education services are much more, much better articulated. And as such, there is something that we have, we as an organization have had to step up and uh, deliver on many of those targets. So this is just a, 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 an organizational structure chart. Uh, Chagas is an agency of the government. It has its own uh, management authority, uh, a board of 11 members, which are made up of farmers and people from industry, and one representative from, from the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, we have a, our own independent director who is, reports directly to the authority. And then within the organization, we report to that director, the heads of the different programs. So there is a, my equivalent, uh, the head of uh, research, uh, I look after the knowledge transfer, which is advisory and education programs. And then we have an operations director that looks after the more or less the nuts and bolts of running the organization. Within advisory, we have 12 regions uh, around the country. And uh, those are, each of those has a manager and somewhere between 25 and 35 staff generally in those regions. Within education, we have the seven colleges. As I said, we pay the, the salaries of all the staff, um, and uh, we have a manager college principal in each of those colleges. So the basic model of, of how we try and integrate research uh, and uh, advisory in the organization is based around this particular drawing here, which or this diagram here, which, OK, is very simplistic, and but it does tell its own story that a lot of, we depend on research for a lot of uh, new knowledge for verification of, of uh, trial results for, from new products on the market, but mostly around efficiencies that can be achieved in, in terms of competitiveness and also in terms of uh, issues in relation to sustainability. We have the, t the team of specialists who, who, if you like, take that knowledge and information and mold it into, into information that's more acceptable to advisors and farmers. And then advisors work with farmers and participate in the normal advisory activities. I'll talk a little bit more, more about those later on. But one really important thing here is that, that we, we engage with farmers and with industry people to feed back into our programs. So we're very much a programmatic approach to, uh, to our services. So one of the, the studies that was done uh, and published in 2014 was this particular study. Many of you are familiar with it, where it looked at the um, at the ecosystem in different countries. And as you can see that that Sweden hit it right in the middle of the of the graph in terms of uh, uh, an axis here, which shows fragmented versus integrated, and uh, an axis on the on the vertical axis where it's strong versus weak ecosystem. So you can see that Ireland here in the bottom corner uh, featured as a very well integrated and a very powerful and strong. And the main reason for that is that we have one organization with the majority of the research, advice, and education built into the one organization. So within our research, and I'm not going to say very much about it, but we have four major programs, and they're listed here. The animal and grassland covers everything from pig production right through to uh, our beef and sheep and, and grassland uh, um, program. Crops, environment, and land use is again covers forestry and all of the uh, related programs around uh, land use. The food program is again split into two. It has a, a very strong dairy food research component and also a, a, a non-dairy food research component. And we have a rural economics and, uh, and, econ and development uh, department also. 
Within Chagas Education, I'm not going to say much about this, but again, we are, the, as I said before, the major provider of Level 5 and 6, which is the vocational young farmer focused training. But we're also partners in the, with institutes of technologies and universities in the deliver of, uh, delivery of Level 8 uh, uh, honours degree programmes. And we also run a sig significant um, research uh, masters and PhD level in cooperation with uh, universities from all over the world. So just a little bit about how we consult with stakeholders because I think it's very relevant that this is a, a, sl a slide from a, a, a one of the occasions where we brought all the stakeholders together. So there was about 150 uh, mix, uh, attendees, that is a mix of farmers, people from industry, people from ministry, and we discussed under various headings the topics, particularly around the implementation of the strategic plans like the food, food harvest and food wise plans. Now each of these groups, their commodity, about, there's about 15 of them based on a commodity basis, so there's one for dairying, one for sheep production, pig production, horticulture crops, etc. And these these work very closely with uh, with uh, with the heads of the research and uh, advisory departments in terms of this, uh, the delivery of of of, uh, of um, the plans and the projects that we are going to uh, put our effort into for the coming years. So just to say a little bit about the knowledge transfer, and certainly we we take this part of knowledge transfer very seriously. That research and research results need to get to farmers and we certainly have uh, a lot of effort into trying to ensure that it does but this this methodology of knowledge transfer doesn't always work or it's not as successful as we might think it is and in fact we find that the more much more efficient form of technology transfer is where farmers uh, interact with other farmers and we get we seem to get much better change from that so when I joined the advisory service uh, many years ago um, my title was a, a temporary uh, agricultural instructor and that word in the English language is, is, is a is, is a very much a kind of top down connotations that we were there to instruct farmers what to do Many of our new recruit advisors would see themselves as facilitators of helping to share learning between farmers. And I think this is a very positive development and something that I will come back to in another slide. So we're no different than a lot of other advisory services. Uh, we, we take research from, from uh, results from research farms, from applied research. Uh, we uh, put that into the context through demonstration farms around the country and we have a quite a significant proportion of those where we are involved in and we run them and also we have the discussion groups which again are an interactive communication system. So out of uh, a total of about 140,000 farmers in Ireland we have uh, paying clients about 45,000 clients who pay us and we deliver a, a complete range of services to those um, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, options for farm visits etc and uh, and the delivery of uh, regular newsletters access to our website so while a lot of our information is free to air people can access it freely uh, the clients the farm our farmer clients get the benefit of, uh, of certainly phone contact, which is much more important nowadays, but also regular newsletters and invitation to meetings and walks, etc. So just to say a little bit here about how we have, if you like, leveraged what, it, what I call this service-based demand type that farmers put on us with a development role around innovation-based services. And so I've listed here the, the, the kind of comparison of what I would call uh, service base. A lot of this is dealing with the, the schemes, the basic payment scheme for farmers, dealing with uh, investments, 
grant aids, etc., that farmers can avail of, and innovation based, where it's much more about changing uh, farmers' practices and attitudes. And certainly, in terms of de technology, we would find it always very difficult to get paid for this type of service. Um, it's not in comparison with service based. So, I suppose. To summarise the slide, we feel that a mix of both is important and that Chagas uh, funding, it drives about 60% of our innovation. So about 60% of the, of the Chagas grant that we get is based on this for type of work and 40% it comes from farmer paying for services. So we can see here that the standard membership is around 175 euros for a small farm, 300 euros for a for a for a larger farm, and it goes up to maybe about 600 euros where a farmer is a member of a discussion group and availing of a farm visit as well. So as I say, we've been been uh, for, uh, lucky to generate about 40% of our income, which isn't isn't insignificant. It's around uh, 11 or 12 million uh, in the last 12 months. So where we have been in the past in terms of uh, client numbers and advisory numbers, uh, we, you can see on this graphic here that our, our advisor numbers have fallen significantly. We had a, an economic crisis in, in 2008, 2007 and 8, and we made a huge adjustment in terms of advisor numbers. But now, fortunately, we're starting to increase our numbers again, or at least we have we have scope to do that. And we during that time, our farmer client client base was very loyal to us, and I think we have uh, made uh, great efforts to hold on to those. And one of the reasons why we hold, held on to them was that we made a number of key um, the key the three key developments, which um, which embedded us in that innovation support framework around uh, providing, uh, certainly providing uh, farmer-based discussion groups uh, and the, um, the joint development programs with industry, which I'll talk a bit about later, and uh, good, uh, this Better Farm program, which is a demonstration farm network across, across uh, the major enterprises. So look at when when I look at the the hierarchy of advisory roles, and this is what we use with our own staff in terms of trying to keep the focus on their the importance of the, of them taking a leadership role in their own areas with their own clients in their own geographic areas in the in the technical areas that they're advising in, and to try and keep up towards the top of this graph, but equally dealing with the normal work, but not being comfort comfortable in just doing the service work here at the bottom of the hierarchy. And so, I, as I say, many of our advisors would say they do this, all of these things every day, and that's a good sign. So this is just a graph, and I, I leave you to read it yourselves in your own time, but it, but it shows a little bit of the history of how we moved, how we moved in the early 90s uh, up to 2015, 19 with uh, a, uh, with a measure from under the Rural Development Programme to support discussion groups. And I think it, we have convinced the government that, that this, this type of initiative, to, that group-based advisory work is, uh, is a, a better model for effective innovation support. So just to change tack a little bit, I just want to, to promote the uh, UFRS organisation. And uh, this is an organisation of advisory services across Europe with a the moment 44 members, organizations from 27 countries with sub-networks in the German-speaking IALB, SESN, which is in the Balkan countries, and a young UFRAS, UFRAS network as well, uh, dedicated to supporting young advisors. One of the things that UFRAS has been responsible for was the introduction of this, the SECRA Certificate of European Consultants in Rural Areas. And this now has been adopted in a number of UFRAS member countries and will continue to be adopted. And even though we have had similar uh, type training programs for facilitation skills training and other training of young advisors, we see the certification as a very important development going forward, 
not just for ourselves, but equally for private advisors and other advisors who are operating within the Irish ACUS. It focuses very heavily on the methodologies and skills uh, needed by advisory staff. So just say a little bit about EU support, and some of you may recognize this slide, and it, it, it just shows, I think it summarizes the way the Europe is trying to support and is supporting uh, under the current program uh, rural development um, on, on the pillar two here in the CAP rural development program, these operational groups and other innovation support services. The other half of that is where Horizon 2020 uh, projects, research projects and uh, CSAs, which are coordination and support actions, have helped, uh, uh, ha are helping to improve the ACA system throughout Europe. So this is just a, 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 a sample from our own, the Irish um, adoption of the uh, CAP measures. And we, as I said before, we support the knowledge transfer and innovation actions and information actions, uh, which mainly supported discussion groups. We supported advisory services through uh, uh, targeted training programs. And in the cooperation measure, we supported a number of operational groups. Uh, we would see that this is something that will will continue and expand in the in the new cap hopefully again on the horizon 2020 projects um, we are not involved in all of these we're not involved in AgriLink, but we are involved in the other projects and we lead the fair share project in chagas so i think we 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 really see this as important that if uh, europe is supporting uh, or is um, has calls for projects which are supporting advisory services throughout Europe, that, that's very important that advisory services are involved in them uh, in, and actively involved in those projects. Let's go back. So this is um, what, I, what we talked about there in terms of joint industry programs. Some of these programs with Glanbia here, for example, um, and with um, uh, Kerry are are now 25, 26 years in operation, and uh, they have been renewed every year. Industry are very happy that they're getting an extra service from us for their farmer suppliers, and we are very happy to provide that. And um, they pay us for the additional cost and the farmer's benefit. So uh, there isn't any conflict of interest because we agree objectives beforehand. And we we uh, value or we evaluate those on a regular basis and produce reports. And the last slide here I have is in refers to this connected program. And again, uh, within the ACAS system, the pro ACAS study that I showed at the at the outset, where, which looked at the the Irish ACAS system, it identified a weakness. And the weakness was that we. We as an organization were maybe even too strong within the ACAS system that other professionals weren't really being utilized. So the legal profession, the accountancy profession, uh, the veterinarians, all of the other people that interact with farmers and help and may help to, to improve innovation on farms, that we, we were asked to put a program together uh, to try and see could we support those. So this is the program that we've come up with and we, we have about 500 participants in this particular program varying from private consultants to legal firms to teachers in small rural schools uh, who have volunteered to join the program. So that's the, the end of my presentation and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Kelly. Uh, now we continue with some questions from our viewers. Um, and don't forget to type in your questions in the chat. Uh, let's start with a question from Inger. How is research and advisory work at Chagas financed? Yeah, the research work is financed uh, uh, about again about 60 percent of the research work is financed by our core grant in aid we call it it's a, a block of money given to us by government but increasingly uh, of of the other of the other 40 percent about 
uh, thirty percent of that is financed by competitive calls. So we compete here by with, in calls that are produced by Irish funding agencies who fund research using again government money, but also using sometimes uh, industry funding. And then about ten percent then of our of our research funding comes from EU and EU related projects that we're involved in and other international projects, for example, with, with FAO or other, other organizations. On the advisory side, um, most farmers, uh, who are, are about 45,000 farmers pay an annual membership fee, and that's for basic membership. Uh, that brings in about, uh, about 8 million, and then about another 4 million euros comes in by in, in income from uh, additional services that we provide uh, for example, soil sampling, various other services. And then, of course, we have extensive numbers of farms which bring in farm income, but again, that's, um, that's just the general income heading. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, we continue with another question from Sophia. Uh, the stakeholder event, who participates mostly Farmers or mostly advisors? Um, very few advisors attend the stakeholder event. Um, it's mostly uh, the heads of programs, and about 60% of the audience are farmers. About 30% are people from industry, from the cooperatives, from the farmer organizations. And then we have people from the ministry and from NGOs. For example, the environment um, um, stakeholder group is very much dominated by uh, national and international environment NGOs organizations. OK, thank you. Hope that answered your question, Sophia. Uh, we continue with another question from Sophia. Um, it's, is it easy or difficult to employ skilled advisors to Chagas? Um, yes, it's, it's, it's easy to employ, employ them. Uh, we have, uh, we usually, for example, we had a competition last year for, uh, we set up a panel and uh, we have uh, usually more applicants than places and uh, we have, uh, I think it's very competitive. And people who come to work in Chagas in the advisory generally stay with us. So they are, we, don't, we don't see very many people who, who leave uh, the advisory role to move to other work. They're quite happy with it and satisfied with the work. But we have, we, we have put in place uh, an MSc program, a master's, in conjunction with University College Dublin uh, to, to, if you like, to, gener to try and generate the next generation of advisors so people are ready and skilled when they come to uh, apply for a job as an advisor. Very interesting, thank you. Um, we continue with a question from Åsa. Uh, what parts of your knowledge activities are paid by CAP? Um, re relatively small, I'd say less than 10%. Less than 10%. Yeah. Less than 10%. Um, you can continue with a uh, follow-up question, Åsa, if you have another one. Uh, we continue with the questions and please write them down in the chat. Uh, Inga has a, questions, uh, a question. Um, are farmers in general open with the results and new ideas in the discussion groups? To what extent are they competitors? Yeah, this is a common question and uh, they are, they are um, naturally competitors and they're naturally competitive with each other. But they seem to, to uh, in, in, the, in the groups, particularly in the major commodity areas like in, in dairy, beef, sheep, they seem to be um, very open with their data. And they are not afraid to, to, uh, to look for help from other farmers or from, from the group. 
and they, more often than not when there is a problem on one of their farms it's usually a problem that other farmers are facing also maybe to do with the weather or making a decision about uh, buying or selling stock or whatever so they they tend to feed off each other so while generally we find that people who are who are nervous of giving data are they don't make good discussion group members and we find that this happens with some, in some commodity areas for example in very specialist areas so if you are the only major um, producer of carrots for example you don't want to tell every other f carrot farmer carrot grower what you are doing because you will all uh, compete in the marketplace so but for most products like dairy and beef it doesn't matter it makes no difference very little Right, thank you for that. Um, we continue with uh, another question from Osa uh, about CAP. Uh, so what do these 10% CAP payments yeah. use for? Um, demo farms yeah, so in the last uh, CAP there was, a, there was a program which supported uh, an expansion in discussion groups. So some of, uh, farmers could apply for and get paid to attend a uh, discussion group based on uh, the number of days that they were attending the group they get paid per day a fixed amount of money and the advisors would also get paid so this is cap money did did support us uh, in one of uh, in it was uh, worth about uh, two million euros to us uh, in one some of the years but it's finished now it was just for three years so it's a it's a significant boost a significant was a significant uh, at the time but it is finished since uh, july of this year uh, the other cap money is was was supporting um, okay. uh, environmental schemes and programs most of the cap payments there went to farmers and the farmers then were free to come to Chagas or come to private advisors to have their environmental plan produced. Okay, thank you for that. Hope that answered your question, Osa. We continue uh, with the questions. Keep writing them in the chat. Uh, Niels has a question. Uh, do you have uh, any more advice on how Sweden should organize advisory services in agriculture? Anything you think we can consider focusing on? Yeah, um, it's very dangerous for anybody to give advice who's not aware of the, all of the, the, the context. But uh, yeah, I think that the, there's a, there is a, 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 a potential to, to uh, create uh, communities of advisors even like what you're doing with this webinar to invite people who are who are uh, whose job is advising whether they are are private or whether they're part of a company and to try and get them to work together with farmers there is a lot of inefficiency in the in the knowledge transfer uh, business and in advisory work and I think we I think we try we would always like to see that you you can you cannot all do the same have the same business model and not compete with each other but if you have a slightly different business model maybe you can complement each other and and provide a better service to the farmers yeah thank you for that um, Laura has a question uh, in what areas do you see most interests interest for Chagas to learn from European networks such as UFRAS? I don't know how you say Sorry, I lost my screen for a minute. Uh, yeah, uh, what, what can we learn from UFRAS? <laughs> okay. I, I am always amazed when our advisors go and they meet with advisors from other countries, how they come back uh, energized about the work they do and energized about how they need to solve problems which they they see here because they see 
other advisors, particularly in European countries, are much better at some things we are not good at. For example, we are probably not as good at looking at the diversification options for farmers in terms of small uh, food, uh, artisan food, for example, or other agri agri-tourism related products where other we see in other advisory services this is much better supported and a much bigger part of the work. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Um, we uh, so maybe you can answer the answer them quite shortly, Professor. Um, Sophia has the questions. Uh, how did the advisor, advisors finance the time, this, uh, time spent in networks like UFRAS? Um, we, as an organization, Chagas funds this, so there is no funding at the moment, but we have uh, potential for some uh, projects uh, to, to, um, to uh, help with this. Uh, there is a Horizon 2020 project called i connect which will help to fund advisors who are interested in learning more about interactive innovation. Um, so there are means by which we can fund this. We know that in other countries they have used Erasmus funding, Erasmus II project funding, to help uh, advisors to participate in, in, uh, in events in uh, UFRAS and other international events. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and the last question we have time for today is from Inger. How is the climate climate between our environmental NGOs and farmers? Any good cooperation? Um, I, I suppose. Look at it, it's 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 always been uh, been a um, a them and us situation with environmentalists and with farmers and. Uh, yeah, we see one or two really good important developments. Um, for example, um, there is an operational group which, is, which has been set up called the BRIDE, B-R-I-D-E project in Cork, in the most dairy, intensive dairy area of the country. And it is, it is based around um, improving the, um, the habitat for, for uh, native bird species. In among intensive dairy farms, so there there is there are positive developments. The climate is is a different story because I think we particularly when we come to climate action, we see there there are uh, some demands being made by NGOs which are not realistic, and we we would have difficulty with them. But we have to talk to them every uh, once a year. We as as Chagas talk to all of the NGOs, we, we, we invite all of them in on one day so they can tell us what we're not doing correct in research, what we should be doing, and we listen to them and we take on board their suggestions and, and, and as much as we can. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, that's actually all the questions we have time for today. Uh, if you want to ask Professor Kelly another question, his email address will show soon on the screen. Now, I thank you, Professor Kelly, for joining thank us. Thank you very much, webinar. Sarah, and thanks and good wishes to all of your listeners. Eh, och så tar jag det på svenska här då. Eh, tack till alla er tittare som har varit med idag. Om ni är nyfikna på fler ingångar på temat rådgivning så kan jag tipsa om nästa avsnitt av podden Landet som släpps imorgon. Då handlar det om rådgivningens roll i livsmedelsstrategin. Om du vill anmäla dig till kommande webbinarier eller titta på något av våra inspelade avsnitt så är det bäst att hålla koll på vår webb. Adressen dit är landsbygdsnätverket.se-landetlar. Nästa webbinarium är alltså den 4 februari och då ska det handla om hur man kan tänka kring inköp av fisk. Missa inte det. Då ska jag tacka för mig, men innan ni stänger av vill jag gärna att ni tittar och svarar på några korta frågor som är viktiga för att vi ska kunna utveckla landet lär. Det var allt. Tack för idag.